when we talk about why we're good at service work, it's because we build relationships and we care about our customer. Um, I think our customers already understand and take for granted that we have uh, GIS proficiency and technical expertise. That's a given with the group that we've assembled. Um, they could go somewhere else to get GIS technical expertise, uh, maybe not as profound and, and proficient as we are. Uh, but the thing that we bring with it is our, our relationships um, that we have with our customers and, and the fact that we care about them. At Broadmap, we have a very diverse set of customers, you know, ranging from a small county government to a large national uh, commercial player. Some of the things that, that come to mind when we talk about our expertise and where we do interact with people who have a, a high level of expertise in the field is in very large data sets. We have a long history of working with extremely large data sets um, from world geography, uh, street databases that span the world. So we understand the intricacies of manipulating and dealing with large data sets, where traditionally some of the tools, off-the-shelf tools that you can use for GIS fall a little short when you get into very high volume and, and high size uh, data files. We've developed technology that we can work around those shortcomings, build our own set of tools, and become efficient in processing very large sets of data, which we have found large customers or large state governments or even national governments need to have in order to process their, their data and, and be successful in the projects that they're working on. That although someone may not be a GIS expert, they may not be an expert in any of the things that we're experts in, they're experts in something. And these people bring things to the scene that we didn't know anything about, and we meet part way. So I think there's a certain respect that you really need to have and realize that everybody brings something to a project. Um, so in terms of transparency, I would say that it's the customer who really dials in the level that they're looking for. Um, we try to stay away from saying what does the customer want and focus more on what is the customer trying to do. And so that will help us form a solution that gives them what they want so they can dial in their level of um, here's my level of understanding of the solution, here's my level of ownership of that solution, here's my level of view into how that solution was built and how it works. Um, so it's really up to the customer and what they're trying to do. Um, they can have as much or as little interaction or involvement um, with the solution as they, as they desire. You know, documentation can be a painful thing. People can say, oh yeah, I've got this great book that describes that. It's a 600 page manual that describes just what you need to know. Nobody wants to wade through a 600 page manual to get their answer. Uh, so when we document things, we try to document things in a way that answers questions easily. And that can be a paragraph. That can be three bullet points and a smiley face or a picture. Uh, it may be a 600 page manual, but if it is, it's electronic, it's searchable, it's organized in a sensible way. Uh, so we really try to provide the information in a way that's easily consumable. Uh, and teach people how to get to what they want to get to. We have systems in place uh, for, you know, standard systems in place for time tracking. We use SharePoint uh, for storage of documentation and making sure that everyone has access to the right documents. We also leverage um, technology that our customers need. Uh, Dropbox could be an example, FTP sites. So wherever sharing information is important, we can work with a customer to fit within their protocols or also rely on the internal protocols that we've developed internally to help us keep track and maintain our own transparency within any given project. All of our communication, be it via Dropbox or SFTP or SharePoint, uh, security is a huge focus for us. Uh, some of this has to do with the nature of the data that we're handling. There's some secure information and we're very cognizant of that. Obviously there's a legal and documentation component of it. But obviously there's a technical component as well. We need to make sure that things are password protected, have the right level of encryption, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So every piece of communication is appropriately uh, monitored. Um, I think one of the best things that we do and one of our core competencies is our ability to be data agnostic and that is applied to both the base map data and any of the products that we can build off the base map data. So in our case we work a lot with with boundaries, with broadband mapping boundaries, coverage areas, for example. Um, each of the states and territories with whom we work has a requirement for a base map data set of streets and other features. And so we developed a way um, to take any base map data set, and it could be a homegrown 
a state-based data set. It could be a data provider's data set, OSM, Tiger. And develop the boundaries um, that meet the needs of uh, the broadband mapping program uh, based on that input data set. So um, we've been able to port this into several other of our solutions, um, several other of, of our offerings. Um, but that is one of the core things that Broadmap is so great at. Broadmap is uniquely qualified in a way based on our history of really understanding street level databases and, and all the other data that comes along with those like parks and rail and, and road. Um, we know how these data sets are built. We know how they interact with each other. So we have extensive experience in understanding the levels of quality of all different uh, available data sets, not only from the open source like OSM or the commercially available data sets or things that are built from a county or a state government themselves. And not only do we understand how they're built, but we also understand how to look at them and how to, how to evaluate them and understand the level of quality that is within any given data set. And then on top of that, how do you work with them? How do you integrate the best of the best? How do you decide on what the right solution is for you? And again, Broadmap has this probably unparalleled exper expertise in the field of understanding these types of data sets and how to evaluate them and how to make a go forward decision on what to use. Because of all of the different people that we have with different skill sets in house, we're able to tackle any project without having to go outside uh, to get help. Uh, there are areas of expertise that we may leverage an outside expert at times, but generally we have people, tools, processes in-house to do just about anything. Uh, that makes it really efficient when you're trying to solve a problem. It's not waiting for four hours or a time zone or whatever it is to get an answer. Uh, we are able to respond to GIS requests. We may hear about something in the morning, get a phone call, says, hey, I want this wacky thing. I don't even know if this can be done. And we have a prototype later in the day, and we may be shipping it the next morning. Uh, things happen really fast because of our uh, in-house abilities. I think customers really value the fact that we can handle everything ourselves in-house. Um, we deal with a lot of customers who they have enough to worry about. Um, they don't want to worry about uh, their partner subcontracting, contracting out, offshoring work. Um, so it really lifts a lot of stress and a lot of burden off of our customers, knowing that there's a single place that they can go to that won't farm out their work, that won't rely on subcontractors who the customer doesn't know. So we, we use uh, Esri tools uh, a lot. Uh, Esri tools are a kind of a core part of the JS world right now, um, and that gives us strengths. They're known for topology. They're known for interactivity of different data sets of different formats, geoprocessing. A lot of the mainstays of GIS uh, we use Esri tools for. Uh, that said, there are a lot of other tools out there that we leverage, and it, basically there isn't a tool out there we look at and we go, ah, I don't even want to know about that. We want to know about that. In fact, we maintain an active library of all tools that we experience, what they're good at, what they're bad at, what's their latest cost, what's their latest downfall, all of this information we actually keep actively so that our employees can reference it. When we enter into a, a working arrangement, a service level with, with a customer, quality, again, is, is very much important to us. It's at the forefront of what we do. Um, so we have checkpoints all along the way, ensuring that what we're doing, what we're building for our customer is meeting their expectations uh, and, and many, many times exceeding their expectations. Uh, one thing that we pride ourselves with at, at Broadmap is, is our integrity and our commitment to the project or the service. And what I mean by that is we will put in whatever amount of effort it is to get it right. Uh, we won't stop short. We won't um, say, hey, that's, that's good enough. They won't notice something. Um, we are our own biggest critics. Uh, we look at each other's work. We, we put a review panel in place for projects. We make sure that it is meeting every expectation uh, that we've committed to before we even entertain um, giving that back to a customer. Yeah, quality is a funny thing, you know. I, we talked about how it's embedded in everything. I think we find that during software development, every time you write a piece of code to do something, you say, you know, if this is what my input is, and you do this to it, this should be my output. We often loop that around at Broadmap and say, well, every time you write something that has an intended consequence, that same code can be used 
as a quality tool somewhere else. So we're reusing code in a lot of different places. We, we, we try to make it as good as it can be. And often I think uh, we get to that point where the end user, we far surpassed their expectations and requirements because we want it to be right. We want it to be something that we can stand behind. And, and if somebody comes back with a question, we will be genuinely surprised if there's something wrong with it because we really, it feels right. And as a result, we have a, a very solid success rate with our products and services.